Today's episode is brought to you by Manny, because sometimes you have to go four point too far and be crazy as Good afternoon on this Memorial Day. This is Manny Moonraker, and you're listening to the UFO Report number four. And is it me, but am I the only one that finds it weird that on holidays you don't really hear about UFOs that much? It's almost like they take the day off as well. Like like they're, they're observing our holidays and ensuring that they don't muck with us when we're trying to relax. Is it because there's more people paying attention to what's in the sky or around them? Or is it because the news hoaxers are also taking a day off? Not sure which one it is. So the truth is that we don't have actual UFO reports to talk about today. However, we have two items of interest. One is Project Blue Book is getting its... uh, Small screen debut, thanks to Robert Zemeckis. And also, NASA reports that all the people that were going bananas over their lunar recognizance vehicle getting batty pictures and claiming that NASA was up to its old tricks again, that they've resolved what the issue is. So let's start with Project Blue Book. For those of you who are not familiar with Project Blue Book, it was a uh, a series of studies that was conducted on UFOs under the auspices of the United States Air Force. This study started post Roswell, wink wink, and basically it came to an end January of 1970. The stated goal of Project Blue Book was to determine if UFOs were a threat to national security and if they could be scientifically analyzed. In total, Project Blue Book collected over 12,000 UFO reports. So we're talking about a period of 18 years. Over 12,000 reports, which was concluded that these were mostly misidentified natural phenomena, clouds and stars, or man-made aircraft. Now, I have never seen a UFO that looked like a cloud or vice versa. Nor have I ever seen a star that anyone can actually claim was a UFO because it's just sti- it's just sitting there in the sky. It's not like it's moving. So those really sounds to me like they uh, try to keep it simple because we don't need to know. In any case, Robert Zemeckis has uh, penned a uh, a deal with the A and E Network to do a ten episode drama on. The History Channel. The key word is that it's a drama. This is not a documentary. No one's trying to go back and do the umpteenth version of Project Blue Book. Basically, what this reportedly is going to do is it's going to take facts from Project Blue Book and put it into a drama following a college professor recruited by the Air Force to research paranormal files from the 50s and 60s. And basically, it's just going to take that ufology theories and stick it in, uh, stick it into a drama and uh, include some historical information. Is this going to help ufology? You know, again, you kind of have to take what you can because this is still a way to keep the, the subject going, especially for those who are not really interested in this or just do not believe at all. If they're using historical data, that's awesome. 
But the fact that it's a drama, it kind of softens the blow, right? But we all know Robert Zemeckis he is, uh, is really great at what he does. He really has uh, honed his craft very well. And we might just see some really good surprises in this particular project. So I don't know about you guys, but I definitely will keep an eye out for this. And hopefully it is all that it is built to be and really bring some good talking points to the subject. Because you know, he's going to work in his perspective on the UFO phenomena into this project. So I'm sure some people are going to have something to say about that in the future as well. Hey, this is Jerome, and from planet Earth, you're listening to the UFO Buster Radio Show right here. Mm -hmm. The second story for today comes out of NASA. According to this, a couple of uh, UFO NASA enthusiasts, so-called alien hunters, saw that there were some really funky pictures coming out of the Lunar Recognizance Orbiter, also known as the LRO. So these enthusiasts decided that NASA again was trying to hide something from us by blurring landscape on the moon. They've been uh, quickly running to the press and anyone that would listen and say, The reason why these images looked so distorted is because NASA was hiding a base on the moon. Of course, those on the extreme side say it was an alien base. Those on the Corey Good side were claiming it was a earthly base that was on the moon that they're keeping secret. Either way, the point Dexters at NASA came up with a solution. Basically, the LRO was shot by a rogue meteorite moving at the speed of a bullet. The LRO was shaken up and the pictures that they say that you see, which if you look at the description, I have an article in there by the sun because they actually have a picture that came into question by the enthusiasts. But apparently what you see is the camera being shaken up after it got hit by the bullet. According to uh, Mike Robinson, a professor at the Arizona State University, and I guess ASU actually has a school of earth and space exploration. Go figure. He says the LROC was struck and survived to keep exploring the moon. And he suggests that the tiny meteorite hit the space probe, knocking the camera so it so they probably produce a wild and jittery image of the moon's surface. Thanks, Mr. Robinson. That really helped. But the question remains is how long did this jittery issue last? And how did it correct itself? I would think even a satellite in space being shot by something traveling at the speed of a bullet would have some significant damage. Because I'm sure if you're down here on planet Earth and you take that satellite and you shoot it, I don't think it would be doing too well. So you guys, you tell me. Do you think NASA is pulling a fast one and they were actually messing around as so many people have stated in the past that they were trying to hide something that was being captured by the LRO? The truth is, there is no way to fix something that's orbiting the moon from here. Because, according to NASA, we don't exactly have vehicles that we can shoot up with people in it to go orbit the moon and fix their satellites. But then again, you never know because the thing, the damn thing cost $504 million back in, uh, in 2009. So the thing might be bulletproof. It probably just uh, has a little dent on the side. 
But like I said, you guys let me know. Comment back on this post for this episode. Let me know what you think. Do you think NASA is covering something up? Is it possible that Corey Good was out there in his uh, in his bikini, moon bathing, in his birthday suit, just hanging out on the moon? I don't know. You tell me. Later on today, I'm going to post the video or the little informational video for the the, uh, co-host contest. And just to give you a heads up, if you want to enter the contest, you have to post your recording, audio recording or your short video on the UFO Buster Radio page on Facebook. So get ready. Get your cell phones out because everyone that has a smartphone can record a video. Keep an eye out on the UFO Buster Radio page on Facebook for more details starting today. With that, thank you for joining me, guys. I really appreciate you. And it's time for me to head over to Wingstop and get my grub on. Ciao.